I had everything I could get and I dare anybody to beat that. The uh, 918 was was interesting because it's very, very powerful. Good handling car, but it's kind of heavy. But it set the Nürburgring production car lap record a few years back. Well, the current GT2 and GT3 RS both could beat it. And they have far less power, especially the GT3 RS. The handicap of the 918 is its weight. It's heavy. And that weight, not only do you have to move it, turn it, break it, but every time you do that with that weight, the tires are getting hotter. And it's hard on the tires. And it's a DOT tire. You know, fantastic Michelin, Sport Cup 2 probably. That's another thing is the, the current GT2 and GT3 RS got to run the Sport Cup 2 R. The R is a big step forward. That's an amazing tire for a hot lap. I've never driven one very long. I've hot lapped them several times, but uh, I get my hot laps done right away. Boom, boom, boom. And that tire is amazing. It, it feels a lot like a, a Hoosier competition tire, an aggressive Hoosier competition tire like the A7, if you know your Hoosiers. Soft as a baby's butt and grippy and whoa. <laughs> I remember the first time I drove one was on a GT2 RS at Laguna Seca with Motor Trend on the hot lap. And I went out in the out lap, come down the long straightaway, go to the brakes, turn for the corner, and I say it out loud. If you look up my hot lap, I say it out loud. I go, grip! The, the tire's really important. It's the single most important part of a car in terms of its lap time the tire. So that was a big advantage also for the later model cars versus the 918. That and the weight. That's what slows down a 918. And what makes it fast is the power and the all-wheel drive and the good chassis balance. Road Atlanta is, it's like a little slice of it and you can learn it. And I know it. And I've had some amazing hot lap opportunities there, like with the uh, hypercars. And Probably the most incredible opportunity I ever had because it came straight from Porsche. I got a call from Porsche PR guy, Frank Wiesman. Frank and I are good friends and he is so good to me and Porsche is so good to Motor Trend. Offering us cars, support, tires, tire warmers. Frank brings tire warmers and he's, he's He's really serious about that. Frank is more than just a PR guy. He's a hot lapper himself. He used to work in Europe and uh, for a magazine there doing the job I do for Motor Trend. And uh, maybe that's why we've hit it off so well. But he called me up and asked me if I'd like to, to hot lap the new GT2 RS at Road Atlanta. And I was like, what? Yes, I would. And I mean, the prologue to that was that I had hot lapped it at Laguna Seca for best driver's car. And so I'd already been in the car and knew it and absolutely fell in love with it. So we come down to Road Atlanta and it's a private day and there's nobody there but Frank and one or two other Porsche guys, Ken, who's their technical guy, and uh, David Donahue was there. He was gonna drive too and a GT2 RS. But the weather was really good. It was 50s, I think. Uh, not that cold, cool, not that hot, good for the engine. Cool tracks are always better because you make more horsepower with colder air, especially with intercoolers on a turbo. And here's a GT2 RS, and it has those R tires. So we get everything all hooked up for this thing, and it's, it's just such a high honor to be in invited to do that by Porsche. It was a special project. And another reason I was invited was I had the unofficial lap record at Road Atlanta in a uh, Corvette, and it was a pretty wild ride. Cor Corvettes are assy. And, you know, it, it's on the internet. You can look up that Randy Pope's hot lap in, at Road Atlanta. And uh, so that was the target, was to beat that. And I was thinking, yeah, I think we're going to beat that, but I didn't really know what to expect. I hadn't driven the GT2 RS at Road Atlanta before, 
And we went out in the GT2 RS first, put a set of those sticky tires on it. So uh, they buck buckle everything up. I go out in this GT2 RS and I don't want to run the tires too hard because they're fresh. I want that magic fresh tire first lap. But you got to make sure you have enough temperature uh, and especially the right side, which is tricky at Road Atlanta because they're all right hand turns. You don't get much opportunity to heat the right side tires. And you can heat the front with braking. But uh, actually the GT2 RS has enough power to heat the rear is pretty easy too. <laughs> and I don't get too carried away with the tire warming either. I, I want to know I have some temp, but it usually doesn't take much. It's not like a racing slick where real race tires sometimes need a lot of temperature to work. And I think that's because they're more focused on racing. This DOT tire still has to be able to perform as a street tire. And uh, that's, that's a big compromise. So I go out for the lap, come down the hill into 12. Don't do that turn flat out because this thing has 690 horsepower-ish. And the GT2 RS is just one of my all-time favorite cars for several reasons. One of them is that it, it sounds, it has this mellow turbo sound that reminds me of what 935 sounded like when I was a kid going to the races in the late 70s and the, the early 80s. The GT3 RS is completely the opposite with that screaming exhaust note, but the GT2 RS has got 180 more horsepower, but has this mellow exhaust. It's understated and effective. And the whole lap was just absolute perfection. And not me, the car. I've always said that Great handling car practically drives itself. You don't have to do anything special. You just go down there, you hit the brakes, and you, you just do the right things, but it just does its thing. And that's how this car was. When you watch the video, it, I'm, it looks like I'm not working that hard, and I'm not. It, it was beautiful. And I had everything I could get, and I dare anybody to beat that with the same spec. <laughs> you know, car's a turbo, blah, blah, blah. I don't trust anybody. But uh, we, came, we came around there. First lap was good. I think I went a little bit quicker on the second lap because of the speed potential of this car. I was bringing it up just like that. And everything felt so good. The braking was so strong and the uh, balance in the corners and the traction under acceleration. The traction was so good, even at this power and torque level. I went a little faster the second lap and then the third lap I went a little bit slower because I knew the tires were coming off their magic and uh, so I pulled it in. So we'd put a good gap on the Corvette, like a couple seconds and it was mostly due to the fact that the car was predictable and the R tires. The R tires really, really helped. It's so sticky. But the car's behavior was so beautiful and it was so different from the last RS I'd been in, which is the last generation 991 GT3 RS.1, which was a nervous, tail-happy car. I have a long history with Porsche over the last 20 years, and I have... Loved the street cars, but then the closer they get to motorsport, the less I like them. The closer they get to motorsport, the more entry oversteer they have, the more oversteer they have, the more dicey and twitchy they are. I am not a fan of that. I do not consider that necessary. I will beat you if you have a twitchy car if I don't. And that's how I got the Porsche factory contract that I had in 2001 for one glorious year. That's how I lost the Porsche contract, in my opinion, was the cars were, were twitchy and loose and bounced around. Not this GT2 RS. It was a new animal. And I remember the first time I drove one on a racetrack, which is when all the light bulbs came on. I talked to Frank Wiesman. I go, Frank, this is a whole new paradigm for Porsche motorsport. The, the RS is a motorsport car. And I said to 
I, I want to know who's setting this up because I'm sure it's not the same people. And he goes, he goes, no, he says, you'll like this guy. You and him speak the same, same language. And I'm going, no kidding, really. And his name's Lars Kern. And he also is racing, but he's a setup guy. And this guy is my hero. I love this man. I met him at Road Atlanta, Petit Le Mans, last fall. And he was talking to me about the Porsche setup and everything. And he said, yeah, he was heavily involved in the GT2 and 3 RS. I said, you never worked on a cup car. He said, nope. I said, they're terrible. <laughs> they are, they're, they're so assy. He said, well, I was talking to the aerodynamicists a couple of year on that. He says, and they said, yeah, you want the center of aerodynamic pressure to be 60% on the front. And, and Lars goes, no, 60% on the back. And I'm going, oh, Lars, you're the greatest thing that ever happened. You're so right. Why would you want a car with 60% of the weight and all of the power in the back to have 60% of its aerodynamic balance grip on the front? I'll tell you why. If you grew up racing go-karts, go-karts are the scourge of race car handling the world over because these youngsters grow up driving these things with a solid rear axle and they won't turn to save their lives unless they're twitchy on the entry. It works in a go-kart. And it all started to come to me like that's why those cars handled that way. Porsche usually gets its drivers from the go-kart realm, from guys who've been racing 10 or 15 years and they're only 17 years old. <laughs> and they're incredibly talented. And they can drive these awful oversteering twitchy cars. And I don't like them and it's not necessary. And the GT2 RS proves it. But even more impressive than the GT2 RS in terms of lap time and performance and being an overdog is the GT3 RS. This thing has no turbos. It's kind of like the same car without the turbos, which are 180 horse and 250 feet pound of torque, uh, foot pound of torque. I mean, that's a lot. I get out of a GT2 RS, get in a GT3 RS, and yeah, it revs like crazy, but where's the beef? There's no torque. It's like 380 pound feet of torque or something. When I was a kid, that was a lot, but it's not anymore. The, these modern supercars are making 500, 600 pound feet of torque. And I miss it. So I hot lapped it. I hot lapped that too, the GT3 RS. It felt very similar, frankly. It was a little bit sharper. Doesn't have as much weight, mostly on the back. Same tires. It feels bloody fast. The normally aspirated, far less torque GT3 RS still feels bloody fast in a straight line. I, I don't get it. They do something right. The torque gear, the gear ratios, the quick shifting, the traction, the aerodynamic uh, efficiency, that it just goes and goes. And I, I beat the Corvette lap record with the GT3 RS too. In fact, it was in the 25s. It was not that far behind. And Road Atlanta has that super long straightaway. I would expect a GT2 to have just killed it. And both of those cars, I could drive them absolutely as fast as I could drive. And I wanted no changes. Uh, there's not a thing I would make different except park them in my garage. You're here because you like a good car story. But let's be honest, we've probably watched enough YouTube videos for a lifetime during the pandemic. It's time to get out of the house and make a story of your own. Extreme Experience puts you in the driver's seat of some of the world's most exciting cars, like this 2020 Corvette C8, at over 30 racetracks across the country. And right now, we're giving away $50,000 for the track experiences and 30% off everything on our website. Head to xxspeed.com to learn more today.